Welcome. I'd like to begin with the introduction. Christopher Langen, who is an independent researcher. He has produced original work in graph theory, in algebra, in advanced logic, in abstract computation theory, artificial intelligence, physics, and cosmology. Chris has focused on one of the most fundamental challenges of our time, and that is a metaphysics that is adequate to what we know. There's a way in which something fundamental happens with the emergence of symbolic language. The, the planet has been altered in an irreversible way with the appearance of the species, Homo sapiens, and the development of language. And we, as Chris points out, others have also emphasized that we tend to think of our languages as separate from the, the reference. So we have we have our language and our knowledge about, about a world out there. And this dualism is ultimately related to so much of the violence that's taking place on the planet, especially in terms of anything in life. A, a movement beyond the divisions among different religious and ideological languages it is a great achievement and gift on the part of Christopher Langen to articulate a, the first, I think, metaphysical system that goes beyond this fundamental dualism. Could you please welcome Christopher Langen? Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Brian. I think you hit the mark on your scores. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to be there, and I'm looking forward to this. You'll see the title is Meta Religion. This actually is, is a term that was rinsed, that was mentioned recently by Sean, who grabbed his ideas that I had. It's about the status and feature of human spirituality. The meaning and purpose of spirituality and religion. Man craves knowledge of his own identity. Human identity is coherent. Existing as a unified whole without gaps or breaks that might interrupt the connection between his various parts and aspects. If human identity were dualistic, existing in two essential or fundamental parts, the equally fundamental gap between the parts would render it dissociative and pathological. To understand his own identity, man requires a self monk That is, he requires a valid interpretation of the human individual in society and of both himself and society in reality at large. This is an unbroken correspondence that spans the extended relationship between man, who inhabits reality, and reality in its most basic and universal form. In other words, man is embedded in reality, therefore, basically, reality is a higher form of man, it's a more distributed form of externalization. Spirituality is the highest form of human identity, and religion is its organized formulation. Its various benign forms has long provided man with self understanding and a sense of community, a model of himself and his relationship with other people, society, and reality at large. Thus, religion is about the spiritual level of human identity. Religion is that which tells individuals who they are and mankind what it is by establishing things or its relationship to both in reality, which, of course, is the global environment. In other words, it's a finally man-reality or person-environment relationship. A man-reality relationship is really the stratification of individual and collective identity. The highest level of human identity is ultimate reality of God. What's well, God really means ultimate reality. And this follows from the fact that man is physically embedded in reality and this shares all of its most general and ubiquitous properties. Note that for purposes of intelligibility, God is properly defined as ultimate reality. Any God not equivalent to ultimate reality could exist only in a more ultimate or equivalently more basic and general reality partially beyond his influence and create power. And would thus come up short in most things of monotheism. Notice the resemblance here to Anselm's reason in its ontological part. A God that equates to ultimate reality might still come up short with respect to one or more other divine properties. 
But in any case, the proper definition of God depends on the properties of the identity or identity operator of reality, to use mathematical terminology, which is what the CTA relies on. However, when man is no longer regarded as a material automaton and instead identified with mind rather than molecular machine, he's no longer identified with molecular machinery, and reality is regarded as physical and empirically accessible. The man reality relationship is transformed to Cartesian mental physical dualism which parts the complete independence or non-commonality of mind and matter. This splits human identity into what a dualistic we interpret it as independent strata. Cartesian dualism, which has several variations, simply asserts the apparent absence of a connection or overlap between mind and matter, or a protein. While apparent absence comes with no certainty attached, the absence and connection now may be apparent after all, even those who have recognized the problem have not been able to see exactly how it could be solved and the connection provided. This problem is hard to solve because one must construct an entire conceptual framework from which to do and it differs in certain counterintuitive ways from our usual picture of the world. In order to avoid having to cope with these differences, it's much easier to simply detour around them, which puts one back on the main road and this saves one from having to go on a steep or lonely climb. The persistence of Cartesian goings may have something to do with another innovation of Cartesian analytic geometry, which excludes from coordinate spaces any mental and or spiritual aspects of the mathematicians and observers who objectively study them in their contents, which are represented as points or regions of space with measurable physical properties that are independent of anything subjective. Thus, Cartesian analytic geometry dualistically separates the observer or mathematician from both space and its content. His mind resides with one, while the other usually represents matter or something else of a physical, non-subjective nature, which faithfully reflects Cartesian mind matter dualism. Religious scripture and doctrine ideally afford a valid and coherent linguistic formulation of spiritual identity, where valid means self-consistent on the semantic and syntactic levels. But Cartesian dualism is synonymous with incoherence. It fundamentally divides reality and then inconsistently reverses itself in a futile attempt to patch reality back together across the gap. This amounts, of course, to logical inconsistency. The coherence and consistency of religion, like those of science, require embedment in a higher level of formulation of logic, the basis of valid cognition and perception. The crisis of human identity and spirituality. Spirituality, of course, being the highest expression of human identity. Where spirituality is the faculty of spiritual identification, the crisis of spirituality is a dualistic or dissociative crisis of identity. This crisis is metastasized into the political and economic contexts, where philosophical dualism has engendered a catastrophic individualism, collectivism, dichotomy that is being cynically and self intrusively played by the powers that be. Present forms of religion and religious scripture instantiate dualism on the level of theory and model. That is, a scriptural or a theoretical language is set apart from its content. Mind, or that which endows the language with meaning, is set apart from reality. And the model, an extended mapping, then spans the dualistic gap. But although the model is always implicitly associated with a mind and thus present on both ends of the identity mapping, this requirement is unacknowledged. Owing to dualism, the prevailing model of man is like a stimulus response machine. Man is modeled as a self-interested consumer and political agent, essentially physical and mechanical in nature. But what is mechanics? It is itself physical as opposed to telling. And this falls on one side of the Cartesian dualistic mirror. The relationship of man to human society to reality is cybernetic. It's structured as a control of communication feedback. But in practice, the feedback itself is controlled. A special corporate governmental controller class inhabiting an associated Edwardville treats man as an object of control through secrecy and disinformation, indoctrination, conditioning, and coercion. Ecumenical and multi religious conferences and councils dedicated to a millennial religious reformation or synthesis are controlled by those with wealth and political power, for whom the utility of religion is primarily to control human identity, to shape it rather than comprehend it and thereby to control the masses. But it was to remodel man at the convenience of the other class. True religious unification is avoided as top-down secular control is facilitated by the division and mutual suppression of divergent ideologies. 
And this situation is maintained by fostering a dualistic worldview in which each religion is an island of faith, separated from the others by gulfs of incompatible doctrine. This is reflected in the engineered opposition of faith and knowledge. Faith and knowledge, or that of which you have a corresponding mode of recognition, are usually regarded as subject and objective object of respectively. Hence, are related by subject-object dualism. This, of course, is just a variation on Cartesian mind-matter dualism and defeats the actual purpose of religion. It's sometimes said that religion is a matter of faith, while science is a matter of knowledge, and never the twin shall meet. But this is an untenable dualism, as faith and knowledge cannot be rationally separated. In order to have faith in something, one must know its identity, while in order to know something, one must believe in one's knowledge. Faith and knowledge must therefore be understood in a way that brings them in coincidence with religion and science converging to As one might expect, but it's certainly to those who are funding control. With all due respect to those present here, academia helps perpetuate the situation. The dominant worldview in academia is naturalism, yet another form of dualism. This term is somewhat interchangeable with atheism and secularism, depending on context. Methodological naturalism excludes supernatural from the content and methodology of science, while metaphysical naturalism excludes it from all of existence. Neither kind of naturalism is consistent with the meaning of the theory of spirituality for religion. Human beings invest religion with positive feelings, emotions, and expectations based on truth claims which required to have a real world content related to the formation and actualization of human purpose and destiny. Religion was described not a mere object in hope, but a verifiable basis of hope. Naturalism like dualism divides reality of human identity from themselves, thus defeating the spiritual imperative of coherent identity. Religion is in rapid decline as metaphysical naturalism or physical monism, which is known the myth of undermined spiritual cohesion. The separation of church and state, originally meant to set God the freedom of the people to worship as desired, has been reinterpreted to mean freedom of the state from religious competition for the hearts and minds of the populace. In other words, it has been misconstrued as another expression of dualism. Moving open the way to a secular anti spiritual theocracy, pure spirituality from its previous role in demon identity and destiny. These related forms of dualism confront us with a choice of destinies, each associated with transformation of singularity. Dualism leads to a human singularity, and a masculinization of the cohesive self dual identity of the human species. Gene Hardy and I'll let your point, I'm sure some people are familiar with that. Our other option, the text singularity, is a continuation of dualism to its logical conclusion. The two tier neo feudal society are high, dominated by a materialistic oligarchy which regards human life, which often has a negative dollar value, as cheap, worthless, or prohibitively expensive. The singularities, human intent, correspond to mind, reality, or subject-object duals. The text singularity is class dualism and top-down governance, or a disguised version of saying which is misleadingly passed off as democratic and bottom-up, but with a bureaucratic inversion. The human singularity is self-dual, a balance of top down, bottom up governments, each is approximated by constitutional republicanism, in which representatives are elected from the bottom up and then governed from the top down. Thus, we're presented with an existential choice of singularities. The human singularity is a convergence on a distributed self governance. While the tech singularity is parasitic, it's an overclass, underclass divergence in which religion or its secular equivalent, e.g., fascism, communism, or wedding of both, is used as a tool of mass indoctrination to control the high. Parasitic divergencies have occurred many times in history. The one now in progress is global and irrevocable. If you now use the scene itself from an insectile, high blood future, the human singularity must absorb and control the tech scene. Self duality, the coincidence of dual aspects and single identity, must prevail over dualism in science, religion, and politics alike. Reality language in 21st century metaphysics. Religions evolve in coupling with cultures, conventions, and morals that come into real world conflict with each other and or the state. Possible responses include segregating religions, allowing or encouraging a single religion to become everywhere dominant, 
playing different religions off against each other in a strategy of mutual content. Merging religions by syncretism, which means collecting their respective beliefs and rituals under one aegis, or eliminating religion entirely. But there's a fourth and more promising option. Unifying internally consistent religions in a well-structured meta-religion or a theological relationship among religions which provides their valid truth claims with coherent syntactic support. The structure of this relationship is that of a language. Like theories of science, religions are scriptural and doctrinal languages taking a single shared reality as concept, including the physical universe and subjective beliefs, codes of behavior, and notions of the sake that arise in therein. This implies that a meta religion is a comprehensive meta language of religious languages. However, to exceed the limitations of dualism and coupled with science, the religious meta language must also be scientific. All intelligible languages include logic as a syntactic ingredient, which means that ostensibly independent languages share common syntax and are merely parallel aspects of one all encompassing language, namely logic itself. In other words, the true false distinction of logic is really identitative syntax. You couldn't identify anything at all without being able to pin the truth value one to it as opposed to the truth value zero. So we need logic in order to identify ourselves and our reality. This implies that a sufficiently powerful formulation of logic comprises common language for science and religion alike, and can thus function as a bridge between them and their respective symbolic and semiotic aspects. But standard predicate logic is itself understood as a dualistic language. Although it links attributes and objects together in attributions, it does so on a weak and tentative basis. Whatever it attributes to real world content can be ascertained only by empirical confirmation. What can be done to formulate logic in such a way as to defeat or circumvent this requirement, thus transforming dualism into self duality? Like all conventional languages, religious scriptural and doctrinal languages are dualistic. That is, they are held apart from their reference in universes of discourse. That they take as their content not only the perceptible universe of science, but a shared metaphysical extension thereof. Standard theology, the study of God and religious belief, an ad hoc meta language of religious languages suitable for their analysis and comparison, was dualistic as well, standing apart from its content. To eliminate cognitive dualism with respect to any universe of discourse, i.e. reality at large, dualism must be formally eliminated within the associated language. The fact that all intelligible languages include logic as a syntactic ingredient implies that the sufficiently powerful formulation of logic comprises a common language for both science and religion, where a sufficiently powerful formulation of logic expresses logic on a metaphysical level for its application to reality as a whole. This amounts to the requirement that it be a super tautology. I wrote a paper about this for Cosmos and History, so it should be available online. I won't go into what a super tautology is right now. Suffice it to say that it amounts to the reality and metalogical self applicability of logic as the ID syntax or identification syntax, the generic identification operator. Super tautology describes the structure of a trialic, ontological, and epistemological metal language. Their inscription has metaphysics in the sense required for a true understanding of spirituality and religion. And as we should note here that ontology and epistemology are naturally coupled in the operation of identification, which involves knowledge on the basis of intelligible scientific existence and vice versa. Mathematical inference is formal and derivational, while causal inference is interactive and linear, events occurring along time. A super tautal, and by the way, that is called the linear ectomorphic limit, or semi model, CTM. A super tautology of all self dually or metaphorically in a way that couples formal and causal evidence. This is the proper mode of evolution of an ontological metal which capable of justifying existence, including its own existence, without the help of any external language. Metaphorical derivation is what already permits the logical inference of necessary consequences. From empirical observations, a scientifically necessary model in inference which requires the implicit distribution of logic over empirical reality. But a formalism can be understood as a higher mode of inference required for metalogical and metamathematical reasoning by reality. So, 
Metaformalism can be further explained as a new self dual level of science. It is usually considered there are just two kinds of science empirical and logical, mathematical, or linguistic. And it, of course, as we know, logic and mathematics are just special kinds of language. They're inseparable in the sense that while mathematics exists in the minds of observable physical objects, including mathematicians, the theoretical aspect of the theoretical science depends on logic and mathematics along with other ingredients of language. In order to deal with the mutual dependency relationship between mathematical and observation and reality, we require a level of science which stands and distributes over both, connecting them structurally and dynamically. It must be inclusive of both empirical and mathematical science, but more powerful than either alone in the way that it relates. Of course, there's already a branch of logic called model theory that deals with the interpretation of the, the empirical phenomena and theories and the mathematical structures of which they consist. But its standard form of formulation is dualist. It actually separates the model from that which is modeled. It now has a self-dual extension called the Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe, or CTMU. Some have called it logos, interestingly enough going to its status as metaphysical formulation of logic. Technically, the CTMU is a reflexive, high-level kind of model theory designed to support the description of reality on the ontological level of discourse, the level on which reality exists independently of anything external. On this level, and all of those to name, the super topological structure of the CTMU when was it absolutely impervious to attack. Just the standard logic requires no assumptions, neither does the CTME. And because the CTA means intrinsically valid in a way that empirical science alone is not, it supports the expression and development of scientific truth in a self-dual conceptual environment. Now, scientific truth, as we know, is pretty much an oxymoron. There's no such thing as truth in science. It's basically observation and empirical induction. Truth is left out of the mix entirely. As a true metaformal ontology, which replaces dualism with self-duality, the CTNU can be viewed as the outcome of what might be called the metaformalist program in the joint foundations of science and mathematics. In other words, it's foundational and it embodies a new approach to foundational reasoning called the metaformalist program. To model religious languages on the appropriate metaphysical level of logic and consistently express their interrelationships requires a self-dual metalogical language which constitutes its own universe and its own model and is thus capable of autonomously validating religious claims of truth and consistency. This language comprises the meta scripture of a unificative meta -religion. Its super topological structure is that of a self configuring, self processing language exhibiting referential closure and thus reflecting the structure of the self contained self-sufficient reality in which we live. Encoding the relationship between man and deity, humankind and the metaphysical structure of reality, it's the only valid basis for eliminating the religious conflict and confusion that threatens our world without sacrificing that which makes us human, which is, of course, our spirituality. Despite the fact that an elementary formulation of the CTMU has recently almost no interest, I think of the three decades of around, at least then proper, it is natural to ask how it is likely to impact the intellectual environment. Perhaps the most profound change that I will view will come from learning that living, breathing human beings are essential and logically necessary ingredients for reality. They're not just emergent phenomena which supervene on group physical processes. In the CTMU, human beings comprise a class of ethics with a very specific mathematical formulation and an essential role in the structure and dynamics of reality. Once this is properly understood in academia, which uh, this is going to sort subterranean, but academia does suffer from some amount of closure that tends to be extremely self-absorbed, has a preference for orthodoxy and conceptual momentum over education. This realization will, of course, be characteristically retarded. Did I choose that word? Clearly, I did. For mathematics and the hard sciences, it will probably be the most, probably mostly business as usual, especially at first, because both already have places in the CTMU in their current forms. Pure mathematics inhabits SCSPL syntax, while science inhabits the linear F-Mopic cinema model. 
as a lipid. And we'll ignore for now the relationship between the syntax and the lipid. For softer and more amorphous sciences, which do not enjoy rigorous mathematical theories, but compensate for their lack of solid conceptual foundations, the benefits may be more readily felt, at least among those who have not been locked into academic naturalism. Philosophy and theology have the greatest potential to undergo a more immediate change. At any rate, it will no longer be possible for philosophers and theologians to rationally dismiss the metaphysical aspect of reality or its implications, or to concoct down off rationalizations based on relativism and existential ambiguity. Meanwhile, the emergence of a common foundational language for all of these disciplines will be gradually raised. As for religion, and that's really what this is about, believers of which often languish under the crushing weight of orthodoxy and group pressure. A whole new level of courage and open-mindedness will be required. But fortunately, perhaps as an unintended consequence of the steady erosion of religious dogma, many minds have already been folded sufficiently to accommodate a greatly enriched understanding of spirituality. Let's hope that there are enough of them to help us attain the human singularity and let's brighten the increasingly gloomy future of mankind. And that concludes the written part of the presentation.